Hello everyone and welcome to the June Dev Diaries for Prehistoric Kingdom. So there's a little bit to cover after update 11 and a lot of stuff to look forward to with update 12. Not much news on update 13 as of right now, but update 12 is shaping up to be a pretty cool deal. Uh, I was about to say DLC, thinking of like Jurassic World Evolution 2 or Plan 2, um, but a pretty cool update. So let's have a look. Uh, overall, update 11 was a big success and the devs are very pleased with the responses to the new managerial aspects of the game going forward. It helped build many new systems that can be further improved on in the future to bring in a variety of new features on top of them. They say that by utilising a public testing branch, they managed to take care of a lot of the main issues that were being found and looks to be something that they'll be doing in the future. Balance, however, can be further improved and some of the issues won't be able to be fixed until update 12 at the earliest. These are some of the most immediate changes that the devs are looking into to help improve challenge mode. Increase the, start, the, the starting cache across all difficulties. Add the loading bay and staff center to new saves by default. Increase the human movement speeds. Reduce the amount of time individual guests spend in the park and it, to improve the flow of the ticket sales. Reduce the construction and upkeep cost of park service buildings. Split the building category park infrastructure into park services and park logistics. This would make searching for more convenient and better support for future logistics modules. Showing the travel time um, slash delay on modules that need to be stocked, indicating how long it actually took for a staff member to arrive. Show the staff efficiency, indicating how many tasks they're able to complete before going on a break. And add a convert to sandbox game button in the options menu, allowing players to rescue challenge games that are struggling. Okay, that is something that I wish we could do in Jurassic World Evolution 2. Um, and, like, uh, Plant Zoo potentially as well. Because, like, if, if, you, if you're really struggling, you could save your game. You could save yourself. And, like, particularly in Jurassic World Evolution 2, when I've played the challenge modes, that was, it was really annoying when everything went to hell. But, uh... At converting to sandbox game that is something evolution 3 needs <laughs> i hope i hope that's in it <laughs> so they're also looking to reintegrate notifications and give them a more defined role serving as a way to communicate unlocked changes within activations or any other one-off events that may have happened anything that actually goes wrong in the park would instead get sent to the park issues screen a comprehensive list of persistent problems that need to be solved. This is where players would be able to easily find empty feeders, dirty habitats, or find out which modules are inaccessible to guests. Clicking on item, staff, or animal will take the player directly to it. Since the issues are all labelled, this menu should also address players not understanding certain state icons. We believe that these two additions alone will drastically improve gameplay clarity and reactivity, especially with excavation events changing month to month. They'll, these changes will be scattered across a few smaller patches rather than coming later in one big update. The earliest patch, which includes sandbox conversion, human speed bus, small balance changes and a bunch of fixes, will be arriving in the next few days. That's cool. Larger additions like notifications and park issues are trying to be finished as soon as possible, but will take more time. Beyond further improvements and support for update 11, the team's now beginning to shift to update 12 and beyond. To kick off this next phase of development, we're giving you another glimpse at one of the previously revealed dinosaurs for update 12, the majestic Brontosaurus. And my goodness, it is certainly majestical, right? That is a very well-made sauropod right there. I remember we saw the concept art in a previous dev diary. But here it looks phenomenal. I love how it looks with those keratinous nodules going down the neck and the and, and like the small spines going down the the back down the tail. And yeah, the pattern is also very striking. And uh, here we go in the daylight with some dry sources a bit of a comparison. So, Brontosaurus is arriving as an alternate genus to another Update 12 edition, Apatosaurus. This thunder lizard is sure to wow guests with its extravagant patterning and dorsal spines. Like I was saying there. <laughs> Our Brontosaurus features a set of large keratinized spikes running down the sides of its neck, 
with the park scientists believing that they might have been used during disputes with other herd members. I mean, that's certainly a theory. Uh, and here's a little comparison between Brontosaurus and Apatosaurus. You can see the Brontosaurus has a much more striking pattern than the Apatosaurus. However, Apatosaurus likely has another pattern up its sleeve. But uh, you can see those keratinous um, spines going down the neck are not present on the Apatosaurus, as well as those dorsal spines that are also not there. But these two will make great Jurassic additions to the game. And not to mention Ankylosaurus is also in this update as well. So one of our goals for update 12 is to revisit a few systems like the park rating to see where it can be tidied up. With this proposed update to the management view, the park rating will display a clear breakdown of its components and current progress towards the next goal. Additional guest variation is one of the things that the devs didn't get time to get back to in update 11 was clothing variation. Update 12 will correct this by not only including alternate outfit colors, but introducing props for visitors to use like hats and phones. Okay, that's actually gonna be pretty cool. I know Plant Zoo does that, but Jurassic World Evolution 2 sort of needs to improve their guests in that regard as well. Like the guests are very some, uh, somewhat bland in, in the Evolution games. Maybe Evolution 3 could fix this and give us some more lively guests. Like I think I was mentioning my new features, speculation videos, that they should be somewhat akin to the Planet Zoo and Planet Coaster guests in terms of their liveliness and... and actually being exciting to watch interact with your park so yeah that's certainly something i'd like to see with prehistoric kingdom and i'm glad they're considering it so tutorials have been a hot topic amongst new and returning players for some time and so the devs would like to finally discuss their approach for the future first let's talk about the requirements we need a tutorial system that is easily accessible walks the player through mechanics at their own pace and that can be easily expanded or changed at any point in development. For this reason, we'll be pivoting to a system that can be accessed during a sandbox or challenge game. The idea is to have guided tutorials accessed through the help menu. Covering small chunks of the game to keep it digestible, these tutorials would be text-based, highlighting buttons or elements on the screen to guide the player. The tutorial box would be movable so that it would never covers an important UI element. So there isn't an exact ETA for this, so for now we recommend reading the newly updated help menu including update 11. We've written a bunch of articles that should help players wrap their head around the new mechanics. Most articles include shortcuts to quickly build specific modules or jump to another page. As nice as it was for the time, the original tutorial scenario became increasingly buggy with each major update and was quickly outdated as new mechanics got introduced. To fulfill the needs today, it would have to be rebuilt from the ground up. We are not opposed to revisiting scenarios again in the future. We love them as much as you do, but the dev team required oh, dev time. I thought it said team required to build and maintain them isn't on the table right now. Realistically, it makes the most sense to try again once the game has left early access and things aren't in flux. Official prefab redo. We'd like to quickly mention that we will be cleaning up improving the game's official prefabs. Looking forward, we would like our prefabs to feel unified and easily accessible and ensure that all the themes are represented across the guest amenities and viewing attractions. We understand that there are players out there who may not enjoy modular building or simply find it too overwhelming, so redoing our prefabs we're taking this opportunity to create something that we hope is more appealing for that plug and play experience. And yeah, I, I can see some, some of the reasons, like I've seen many people, I think it was uh, Evolution Square, I think she was mentioning in her Jurassic World Evolution 3 once video uh, that she didn't want it to be as modular as something like Planet Zoo or Prehistoric Kingdom as the more simplistic building style was um, sort of her preferred um, way of playing the game, if I, if I get that right. I'm sorry if I didn't get it quite right, but I can see where she's coming from in that regard. So like Planet Zoo and Prehistoric Kingdom, they're certainly meant for the people who like the very detailed modular building style and Jurassic World Evolution is not that style it has it's, uh, it has already pre-built buildings that you can just place around and they serve their purpose 
Whereas here you have different sorts of pieces that you can stretch and change and all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, like it, there are certainly people out there who do find this sort of gameplay a bit overwhelming and a bit compl complicated for many. But uh, yeah, I could see this uh, being a good improvement to the game to allow, allow it to be more flexible in that regard. So that is Dev Diary of June 2024. So there's a lot of things that we can look forward to with update 12 and a lot of things from update 11 that will be improved on in the future. So there's a lot of good stuff coming our way for Prehistoric Kingdom. And yeah, I'll be seeing you guys in the next one. As for now, enjoy what's probably going to be my new favorite sauropod, Brontosaurus, in Prehistoric Kingdom. But uh, yeah, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.